We are going to use Google Spreadsheets to create a residual plot. To do that, we need some X and Y data. So first, let's open up a new sheet, and we are going to find some data somewhere. We could either manually type it in or handily copy and paste it in. And so we have an X variable, which in this case is year. I'm going to label it as X, so I remember that. I have the actual CO2 output as my Y. I put the word actual in front because it reminds me that this is the real Y from the actual data set because later we're going to have a predicted Y. Now one of the first things you want to do is figure out the regression line equation because that will allow us to get a predicted value. So we need a slope and a Y intercept. So I'm just going to type in the word slope and Y intercept um, to remind me these are just labels for my own benefit so I know what I'm getting down here. To actually calculate it I press the equal sign. And then I can start, start typing in the word, which in this case is simply slope. And you'll see that Google will autocomplete it for me. So I click on that, and it asks for the data Y followed by the data X. And it's a range. And so I could manually type in what that range is, or I could just highlight the numbers that I have. So highlight numbers here. That's my y's that come first and then it says comma and then I need to highlight my x's. Now if I had done this before and I wanted to reuse this spreadsheet I need to make sure that I extend these ranges later um, when I uh, add more information. So I do that there's my slope it's saying that the slope of the regression line of this data is 1.47 approximately. My y-intercept is going to be the same thing except it's going to be equals intercept and that will give you the y-intercept of a linear regression line. So click on that, ask for the y values again, comma, the x values, close my parentheses there, and so there's my y-intercept, negative 2571 or so. Here, I'm going to add a new column, and I'm going to say instead of actual CO2, my actual Y, I'm going to do predicted Y, predicted CO2. And the predicted value is what I expected the Y value to be based on my regression line equation using a real X. So I'm going to write a math formula here. So I'm going to hit the equal sign, and Y equals MX plus B, or slope times the x value plus the intercept. So slope is right here. I just clicked on that number. Times is the asterisk key, shift 8. The x value, 1960 in this case, plus my y-intercept plus b. So in this case, it's going to add a negative number, so it's really subtracting. But I still do plus because the negative is built in. So y equals mx plus b. And I could just hit enter here. But before I do that, in order to take advantage of some of the handy things with formulas and spreadsheets, I'm going to actually put a dollar sign between the b and the 16 and between the b and the 17. This is for my where I got my slope and intercept. You might have different letters and numbers depending on where you put those cells. Um, the A2, I'm going to leave it without the dollar sign because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down in just a moment to calculate it for everything. So I hit enter and I get my predicted CO2 of 311 or so. If I have that cell highlighted in the bottom right, um, I'll have this little crosshairs. I can click down and drag and when I release down here, I have dragged my formula all the way down. And what you'll notice is that this one has a 2 in the formula, this one has a 3, and so if I were to double click on any of these you can see how it's using a different year for each calculation separately. But every single one of them is using B16 and B17, the slope and the y-intercept, because I put those dollar signs halfway through the middle, which meant it stopped um, moving or dragging along as I did that. So that's why we put those in there. So now I have an, a real x, a real y, and a predicted y. And if you remember, a residual, I'm going to actually write that way off to the side here, residuals are actual values of y minus predicted. So I'm going to do equal sign, click on my actual value minus my predicted value, hit enter, 
and my residual was 316 minus 311 is about 5. Drag that all the way down here, and it's going to do that for every one of these. So I'll have some residuals that are positive, some that are negative, based on if they're above or below the line. I also am going to want to copy and paste my x values if I'm going to make a residual plot. So it's one thing to know the residuals if I want to graph it without much effort. I can copy my x's, drop them right here, and I can graph each x value against the residual so that I can see how they line up. So to make that graph, I'll highlight everything here and click the little chart icon. What you'll see is I get some options here for a chart on the side. I'm going to choose my chart type of scatter plot, and that will adjust it to look like this. And I should be able to simply take those options. So now I have residual graphed against year. Residual is the y value. The x is my original x value of year. Um, and when you do this, you're, if you're looking for a good linear fit, you should expect to see this plot to look kind of random, to have some above, some below, and in no particular order. When I look at this graph, I actually see a bit of a pattern. So I see that it kind of starts out uh, above, drops below, goes back above, almost kind of looks like a parabola. Uh, when you see a clear pattern to the data in the residual plot, it means that your original uh, method of fitting a line to the data was probably not very effective. So in this case, we use linear regression without any modifications. Um, we probably would have been better looking at a different uh, model to better fit the data. So in this case, a linear fit was not a good fit to this information. But that's how you'd make a residual blot and do a real quick interpretation of it with Google Sheets.